Friday afternoon. Today's agenda is to go through the details of the call and then have a Q&A se Q &A session. This meeting is being recorded and we ask that when submitting questions, you do so to the panelists in the Q&A box. Before we get started, I would like to introduce you to today's Chicago Alfresco panelists. My name is Lupka Benak. I'm the director of Chicago Department of Transportation's Livable Streets program. Vanessa Irizarry is here. She is a coordinating planner with the Chicago Department of Transportation's Livable Streets program. We will have Brian Gallardo joining us, who is Assistant Commissioner of CDOT's Permit Office. And then we have Rob Foytik, who is with Choose Chicago. Vanessa will now walk us through the call, call details. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So what is Chicago Alfresco? Um, Chicago Alfresco is an initiative to support the creation of active community spaces that are anchored by outdoor dining and highlight community focused place making, support community identity and provide opportunities for public enjoyment. The program is part of a broader city initiative to open streets and create places for dining, public activity, community, arts, culture, walking and biking. Building upon the existing expanded outdoor dining program, the city is encouraging local community organizations such as chambers of commerce, special service area providers and other nonprofit organizations to submit project proposals. The Chicago Fresco design guidelines that are included as part of this request for project proposals encourage the use of creative elements to design visually appealing community spaces. Elements can include seating, planters, barriers, surface treatments such as paint, um, signage, lighting, curbside platforms, and other site furniture. Financial assistance um, is being provided by Choose Chicago. Um, Choose Chicago is accepting applications from Chambers of Commerce, Special Service Area Providers, and other not-for-profit organizations in need of financial assistance for the purpose of implementing a Chicago Alfresco project pursuant to this request for project proposals. Um, if you're interested in applying for financial assistance, please contact Choose Chicago directly. As Lupka mentioned, Rob Foysek from Shoes Chicago is on the call and he'll be available at the end of the presentations to answer any questions regarding financial assistance. Proposals are going to be accepted for a variety of project types and scales. Um, the project duration must be a minimum of six months and preference will be given to projects that commit to activating the public way for up to three years. Um, the different types of projects include existing plaza programming. Um, CDOT has approximately 50 plazas under its jurisdiction. Um, information on plazas that might be suitable for Chicago Alfresco projects have been uploaded to the Chicago.gov Alfresco website. Respondents can propose to activate these plazas with movable furniture for outdoor dining and public use, as well as, as other types of, of installation. Um, street Alley activations is another project type. Street and alley closures can provide additional dining and community gathering spaces. These will be dependent on the feasibility of the street alley closure and its impacts due to the traffic network. Preference will be given to projects that demonstrate community support for long-term or permanent closures of the proposed project location. The final project type is curbside use, whether it's platform or non-platform. The use of parking spaces along the curbside of the street can provide an opportunity for expanded sidewalks and provide additional public outdoor space. Platform and non-platform solutions can provide additional space for outdoor dining and public seating. Projects can incorporate seating on sidewalks, but a sidewalk cafe permit will be required for dining service. The Chicago Fresco Design Guidelines do show design requirement requirements for each curbside activation type, both platform and non-platform, including barriers and safety element requirements. CDOT 
provides a free standard people spot design and assembly manual, greatly reducing or eliminating design costs associated with people spot installations. Respondents can also provide a customized people spot using CDOT's design guidelines. CDOT will be accepting applications at any time for the Chicago Afresco call. However, the timeline shown below has been established to support projects during the upcoming outdoor dining season. As you know, the request for project proposals was issued on March 19th. Right now we're having our virtual webinar and Q&A session. Proposal submission deadline is April 15th at 5 p.m. Respondents will be selected around the end of April, April 30th. And the first round of projects will be groundbreaking starting on June 1st and ongoing. The evaluation criteria um, is as follows. Respondents uh, must meet the local community organization eligibility requirements, either a chamber of commerce, an SSA provider, or a not-for-profit. Proposal needs to demonstrate strong community support for the project and its public benefit. The project is located in a business district or commercial corridor. It promotes economic development activity and or has been part of a successful expanded outdoor dining closure. The project has to maintain an uninterrupted and unobstructed walkway for pedestrians on the sidewalk adjacent to building facades, and they must meet all ADA requirements. The projects have to mitigate any impacts to emergency vehicles, bus services, or traffic network. For example, projects cannot block bike lanes. They should not be less than 30 feet from any intersection and street signage cannot be blocked or sight lines for pedestrian and vehicles cannot be impeded. The project should promote programming and placemaking. Um, they should incorporate outdoor dining as well as community activity. The respondents must be a legal entity in good standing with the Illinois Secretary of State. The respondents also must demonstrate their ability including financial ability to, ability to implement, maintain, and manage the proposed project. A maintenance operations and staffing plan must be included. There must be a plan to gather pre and post implementation data related to the project. And the project has to demonstrate creativity, innovation, and high quality design that is functional and attractive. The next few slides address approval, the approval and permitting process for those project proposals that are selected. So these are not requirements of the project proposals and the applications for project proposals, but this is more of an information session on what selected project proposals will be required to do if selected will be required to submit signed plans or diagrams, certified drawing stamp by a Illinois certified architect or engineer, especially for platforms and vertical installations. If certified drawings are not required as determined by CEDA, detailed diagrams showing proposed project layout will be required. Preliminary traffic reroute plans showing street and alley closures will be needed if applicable. Letters of support will need to be submitted from those businesses and residents being impacted. Typically, these are residents and businesses that are adjacent to the proposed project installation area. Certificates of liability insurance will need to be submitted with policy limits as shown on the slide. Commercial general liability of 1 million, automobile liability of 1 million, and workers' compensation and employment liability of 100,000. 
insurance endorsements, specifically stating endorsement of the city of Chicago will need to be submitted for commercial and automobile liability only. A city of Chicago economic disclosure statement will need to be submitted. You can find those online. And a state of Illinois certificate of good standing will be required. Third parties will be required to sign a legal use agreement with the city of Chicago. These are for terms up to three years. It indemnifies the city of Chicago and it establishes the insurance requirements. The legal agreement grants non exclusive use of the public way for the requested purpose, such as a plaza activation, a curbside use, or a street alley closure um, for the duration of the agreement. And it stipulates the grantee's responsibilities, such as construction, operation, maintenance, removal of the installation, storage, and public way restoration upon project completion. Two CDOT permits at the end of once the legal use agreement is executed, two CDOT permits will be required. One is the make way for people permit that allows the use of the public way for the proposed use. That is a $75 permit. And an occupy the public way permit for the actual construction and installation. That's the actual act of doing the installation, for example, for allowing a vehicle to occupy the curb during construction. That fee is typically per linear foot, so it will vary by project. Respondents selective will be responsible for complying with all applicable laws, including city permitting requirements. The City of Chicago will work with selected respondents to identify and obtain all necessary permits from the city, including but not limited CDOT, the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, and the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. There are very important permitting requirements for retail food establishments that are included in any of the applications. All establishments directly providing table service or distributing food for curbside pickup must have a, a valid retail food establishment license through the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. All businesses selling alcoholic beverage beverages for consumption will have to obtain an outdoor special event liquor license through BACP. Businesses seeking to extend dining service onto the sidewalk have to obtain all required sidewalk cafe and extended sidewalk cafe permits, as mentioned earlier, through BACP. If tables and chairs placed on the sidewalk do not meet the requirements of a sidewalk cafe, extended sidewalk cafe, or extended outdoor dining permit, um, they will need to remain open for public use and be used for curbside pickup dining only. Businesses seeking to extend dining service onto the street must meet, again, all requirements of the extended outdoor dining permit through CEDA, DKs, and BACP. If tables and chairs placed on the street are not permitted through an extended outdoor dining permit, they must also remain open for public use and be, be used only for curbside pickup. What that means is that anybody can go into a store, purchase a sandwich, for example, and come back and sit at a table, or anybody can choose to not consume anything and sit at a table. All projects must meet COVID-19 social distancing guidelines as established by the Chicago Department of Public Health. And this concludes our short presentation Hopefully it was informative. Now we just wanna open up for Q&A. Lubka is gonna read out any questions that we receive through the chat and one of the panelists will answer your questions.
Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Um, we're going to start with some questions that came in through the FESCO website. Um, the first question is, the first few questions are for Vanessa. So, can a chamber and SSA partner on a grant proposal? I want to say yes. It's not clear whether the question is whether a chamber and an SSA can partner together or whether a chamber and an SSA can partner with another third party. Um, but the answer to those would be yes. And then a um, similar question is can a chamber and SSA and architect partner on the grant proposal? That is correct. As long as the SSA chamber or nonprofit are the entity entering into an agreement with the city. Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Um, the next set of questions are for Rob uh, with to Chicago. The first question is can funds be used to repair the plaza if an activation or a community space was created in a city owned plaza? Um, I don't see why not. I would need to chat with my colleagues in the Department of Transportation uh, to discuss kind of the, the, the general maintenance of those areas, but I think it's certainly something that we could discuss for sure. Yes, and CDOT would also have to evaluate what it is that you are proposing needing repair. And it would have to go through our normal permitting process for work in the public way. Rob, another question for you. Can funds be used for payroll? Payroll. So, um, in terms of labor, um, installing um, a location, yes, of course. Um, if there are, um, uh, you, you know, design fees, architect fees, that type of thing, yes, of course. Um, that should be built into the budget. Um, uh, if there is program management, um, or project management, uh, we, you know, we can talk about that on a case by case basis. Generally speaking, you know, we do have a limited amount of funds. So if it's, um, you know, covering hours of normal staff members, that would not probably be something we, we would uh, be able to cover with the grant. Can funds be used to purchase cleaning supplies and rent dumpsters slash portable toilets? If that's part of if that's part of the 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 longer term activation of the space, uh, yes, I guess I would just challenge um, an, an applicant to consider consider whether or not uh, porta johns were a good feature of a longer term installation. And again, if you're replacing anything in the public way, like a dumpster or a toilet, that would have to go through our permit process as well. Um, can funds be used to provide mini grants to restaurants? No, I'm afraid not. Unfortunately, uh, none of the funds can go directly to a, a restaurant or business. They all need to go uh, to the Chamber of Commerce uh, or SSA or, or other neighborhood organization to create a public space. They can't be used uh, to create any uh, or, or to purchase any uh, materials or equipment that are, are for a specific business. So if you check out ChicagoAlfresco.com, uh, we've got a list on there of the different things that can and can't be covered. Um, so just as a, as a quick, uh, a, a quick overview of what we are able to do, uh, we're looking to provide grants, uh, to organizations, uh, not to exceed 250,000 dollars each. Uh, that's on the high end of, of what an installation might cost. Um, eligible expenses would include the design engineering construction services, as I mentioned, uh, as well as materials such as barriers, paint, landscape elements, modular design systems. Uh, as well as any fabrication installation related to the installation uh, to to the space, project management staff, as I mentioned, can be discussed on a need by need uh, on, on a case by case uh, basis, um, and then uh, and, and no nothing like for dining tables or or fixtures or structures that would be inside of a of a restaurant sidewalk cafe. So uh, this is for the 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 activation of the public way. Uh, and, and as Vanessa mentioned, anything where a restaurant is expanding is a separate permitting process uh, th that, of course, can be in the area, uh, but, but not exclusively for the restaurant. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to, to take them as well. Thank you. And I think one more question right now in this round for you, Rob, is can funds be used for insurance, like general liability or workers' comp that's required for um, this call? 
So if it's part of the execution of the project, yes, that should be built into the budget as part of the construction costs. Thank you. We'll move on to now um, some of the Q&A questions received. First questions, our city, uh, Vanessa, um, I'm not sure if Brian's joined us yet, but are city owned parking lots eligible? The city owned lots are managed by the Department of Planning and Development and are not under the jurisdiction of the Chicago Department of Transportation, so not for this call. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I took it took about 15 minutes to get the screen loaded. I really apologize. It's okay. Thanks, Brian. Brian. And uh, I heard that last question. So, uh, at any other time we use those city-owned parking lots, usually they have to get uh, a right of entry agreement in place to use something like that. Okay. Are we responsible for funding the installation along the public way? Yes. The, the the respondent is responsible for the installation. So here's the, uh, thank you for this presentation. You mentioned a number of permits that are necessary. Is there an order of operations in terms of which permits they should pursue first? I realize that may vary project to project. I offer this to Vanessa first, as I think before you go get permits, there's a few steps before the permitting process. So Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 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 so there's a process, right? So once a respondent is selected, um, we would go through a discussion process about the proposal. The make, there's gonna be a make way for people permit that's going to be eventually released as part of that process different agencies within the city will be reviewing the application so we'll be working and coordinating with the applicant but we will also be coordinating internally to make sure that all of those required permits are being triggered within the Make Way for People application, and they are being approved as part of that Make Way for People permit process. And Brian, feel free to step in since we use a similar approach for EOD. Yeah, you're 100% correct, Vanessa. Um, the, the permit is the end result of the process. So yeah, don't, don't feel like you have to kind of jump around or try and get a permit beforehand. Once you apply, as Vanessa said, it'll we'll run it through the paces, and if everything is okay, you will get your permit. It, it's not a it, don't think of it as a separate thing. Correct. A cafe would need to apply with the chamber or SSA. So would a cafe need to apply with the chamber and SSA? A chamber, SSA, or local nonprofit needs to be the applicant for the call for project proposals and will be entering into an agreement with the city. We understand, of course, that since this is related to supporting outdoor dining, um, different organizations will be working with retail food establishments as part of that process and as part of the application, but the different businesses are not entering into an agreement with the city. How long can curbside use type projects be installed for? Winter months? So first the question is how long are the projects can be installed for and then can they exist over the winter months? So currently people spots, which are curbside uses are allowed on their make way for people, um, are a use agreement is established for up to three years. 
but they're installed between May 1st and November 30th to avoid any issues with snow and any issues with snow plowing because we don't want especially platforms to be damaged during the winter. Um, for non-platforms, for EOD, I guess I look a, a little bit to, to Brian um, on feedback on how that's being addressed. Uh, so for the EOD permits, when they're uh, using the curb lane, um, there was no restriction for it to be over the winter. The only requirement was that the permittee is responsible for clearing snow if it were to uh, if it were to accumulate uh, over the winter months. Um, and if you wanted to operate over the winter, we would you'd have to let us know so we could let streets and sand know. And again, um, you would then be responsible for clearing the snow in that specific area. Next question, um, and this might fall to a few of you. Can an organization utilize the grant awarded to assist more than one restaurant? So I'll jump in there. This is Rob uh, at Choose Chicago. So I would say, um, so as a trick question, um, so the grant, um, I would reiterate, can't assist any restaurants directly at all. Um, if you want, if you want to create a, a community space that several restaurants would be able to uh, benefit from, uh, th that their patrons uh, can, can sit out there and enjoy a drink uh, under the stars uh, or um, otherwise uh, uh, wait in that area, of course, that's fine. That, that, that's great. And that's kind of the idea here. But in terms of providing direct assistance to restaurants, um, I would just reiterate, um, unfortunately, our funds can't be used for that. Is there a possibility of receiving maintenance grants over time if we were to have the space for the full three years? That is not guess, something envisaged as part of the True Chicago grant, no. Um, next question, is this grant for a three-year term, Rob? Um, the timeline for the grant funding? Sure, yeah, so the, so the idea of the grant is really about the, the construction and installation uh, design as well of the, of the area. Um, once it's in place, uh, we, we would look to the local organization to take some ownership of that and make sure that it's looking okay and weeds aren't growing. Um, if stuff breaks, you know, um, obviously, you know, we'd love to have a conversation about replacing it, but um, going forward, maintenance of the, of the area would be on the um, can an individual business apply for Chicago of Fresco or only chambers, SSAs, and nonprofits? Only chambers, SSAs, and nonprofits can apply. Can two nonprofits enter in an agreement with the city of Chicago for this project? Vanessa, I think that question answer is yes to that. And similar to a question we had earlier, correct? So I think we've addressed this before, um, but so there were two questions, right? Can an individual business apply for Chicago Fresco or only chambers as to say a nonprofit? So yes, we're looking to enter into agreements with only chambers as to say is a nonprofit for this call. Can two nonprofits enter into an agreement with the city of Chicago for this project? We would have to talk to law about how that would work, because from what I understand, that will require some sort of partnership between the two different bodies, and then those two bodies entering into one agreement with the city. And I don't, we don't have precedent to that on the, the Make Way for People agreement, so we would have to check. Does this require aldermanic approval and or will the department alert the alderman's office when Alfresco is approved in their ward? Local support is important. We, we, we ask for um, project proposals as we discussed at the beginning to sort of really um, be in the spirit of sort of community needs and what the community wants are, um, we would notify the alderman of any respondents 
um, that are successful in their application. If a chamber has several restaurants interested in a curbside project, would that be a single application or multiple applications by the chamber? This would be one application by the chamber. Can we include storage of street barriers in the budget? I think this is for Rob. Sorry, I was trying to find my mute button there. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I'd be curious to see what what that number looks like as a part of uh, as a part of a budget. If it is um, critical to the execution of it, of course. Um, I do recognize though that that's not necessarily a long term solution uh, when the grant funding you know runs out. So, um, would be happy to discuss that. Does the city have any other funding sources to support Chicago El Fresco? Vanessa, I think that would go to you. Not currently. Yeah, not if I might chime in, this is Rob. Sorry. Um, the, I know that the city is working on some CARES Act funding. It's been uh, reported in the press. Um, that is not yet uh, uh, available for restaurants, but there will be grants available uh, to, 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 to certain restaurants there. So, so that is forthcoming from the city, but is not yet announced and not a part of Alfresco per se. Um, we don't have additional funds at CHU Chicago at the moment to support this. Um, and because, uh, we, we, because of the generous support of Diageo, uh, we're able to provide these grants. Um, but because of the business there in, uh, in liquor, uh, there are state laws that prohibit us from uh, allowing these funds to flow to businesses, which is why we have to be so strict about um, it not going for dining furniture or, or, or that sort of thing. So this could pay for an outdoor dining space in front of a restaurant that currently does not have one as long as the applicant is a nonprofit. In that case, the outdoor dining area is to be used by the public without consuming from the restaurant. I think overall, Vanessa is seeking clarification. I'm just rereading the question because there were a few components um, on that question. Um, so the installations and the project proposals for Alfresco are meant to provide community spaces that are vibrant and that also support outdoor dining. Um, so that being said, um, to, I'll use as an example, people spots. They're typically installed by SSAs and chambers of commerce across different neighborhoods. They are public, um, but they go into partnerships with businesses adjacent to them um, for maintenance, et cetera. And sometimes they're used, and most of the times they're used actually for curbside pickup, um, where you would have a cafe or something of the sort. People will go into the cafe and come out and enjoy their beverage or food at the people spot. Um, in this case, outdoor dining service would be allowed depending on the specifics of the proposal because some of it might fall under sidewalk cafe or extended sidewalk cafe permits. So we will have to look at each application. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers the question. Does the packet with its permits need to be completed in their entirety by the 15th? No, the call for project proposals is due on April 15th, not the application materials and the permitting requirements. Right now, what would be due on the 15th would be all of the information asked on the application form that is located on the supporting documents at the webpage chicago.gov backslash alfresco. 
I think there's a few questions that are coming in about if we wanted to use a vacant lot, would we have to get approved by the city first um, before applying for this grant? Or is a vacant lot even eligible for Chicago Alfresco? So, extended outdoor dining, and Brian, feel free to jump in on extended outdoor dining, allows for use of parking spaces for dining. The Chicago Alfresco call is for public way with the CDOT's jurisdiction. So you might be able to do an extended outdoor dining permit in a city owned parking lot or a parking lot, but the Alfresco call is for CDOT's public right of way, meaning streets, alleys, curbside, and CDOT plazas. Yeah, in terms of the EOD program, um, there are a few uh, instances where an adjacent lot um, owned by somebody else has been allowed as use for the EOD. But if you're talking about just in general, a, uh, a vacant lot that is not adjacent to the business that's going to be uh, maintaining or operating uh, it, that is not something that we've been doing. Just not, just not. So it, it would have to be somehow adjacent to or connected to the, the business that's actually managing the, 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 the permit. Can an SSA build the maintenance fees into their budgets to fund the ongoing obligation? Will the organization be required to sign a maintenance agreement? So I think the first one goes to Rob. Um, can an SSA build maintenance fees into their budget? Uh, no, the, the grant is again for the construction and installation of the space. Uh, ongoing maintenance of the area would be uh, an expectation of the uh, organization. And the second part of the question, Vanessa, will they need to sign a maintenance agreement? The maintenance responsibilities are included as part of the legal agreement that will be entered between the third party and the city of Chicago. Brian, I think the next question is best for you. Is CDOT going to issue sidewalk sale permits this year or is this program meant to take its place? Uh, no, these are two separate uh, programs. Um, th this is not a replacement for sidewalk sales. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, we're still um, waiting on some updated uh, public health guidance as to when those permits are going to uh, uh, be issued again. Uh, I don't unfortunately have a, a specific date for you right now, but these are two separate programs. And at some point, yes, um, as the COVID restrictions are pulled back, we will begin issuing those again. NASA is service and consumption of alcohol permitted in dining areas. You any proposal that seeks to have alcohol sales will have to go through liquor licensing with the city. So we will have to look at those requirements during the application process and permitting. The next question um, talks about whether the cities um, can see that D case and BACP incentivize community participation by waiving permit fees. Brian, um, maybe you could speak to CDOT's permit fees. So, um, in terms of the EOD permits. Um, the, there is no fee for the EOD permit itself, um, uh, at least from CDOT. I believe there is a fee for any liquor licenses that are being applied for through BACP, um, but not uh, not for the EOD permit itself. Uh, for Alfresco, um, that determination hasn't been made yet. We're still trying to see how it's going to be categorized um, and whether or not uh, there is going to be a fee and when, what that would be at this point. Will we be required to place signage at each site for the project? I think signage is going to be dependent on the specifics of the proposed installation, right? So if you have a platform, um, you will be required some safety, not to get technical, or in three signs, for example, at each sign of the people spot, just to for, for safety reasons. 
um, if you're going to do a street or alley closure, you would want to have some signage at each end saying street close, alley close, plus what the project's about. So I think it's going to be um, a discussion um, with selected respondents. Rob, is the award given over a period of three years or in one lump sum? It's uh, it's given in one lump sum at the beginning to to do the construction and installation. Vanessa, what is the community support requirements again? Can you go over? So you will need letters of support from businesses and residents that are impacted by the proposed installation. Typically, those are the businesses and residents adjacent to the location. And Vanessa, can programming take place within the El Fresco spaces? Um, it, it is the understanding of the person submitting a question that EOD spaces do not allow for activations, but is El Fresco different? It will be in the spirit of Alfresco, <laughs> especially for plazas, for example, for CDOT plazas to allow for programming, but we will have to follow CDPH COVID guidelines. So it might be changing um, as we move along in project proposals and permitting. So we will all have to be mindful of that. I would just jump in and say also from the grant side, while ongoing cultural programming probably isn't a part of the, the funds that we're able to provide, art is certainly something that we want to be a part of these spaces um, if possible. Uh, and again, as Vanessa mentioned, obviously having to follow CDPH guidelines uh, as COVID continues. Um, but if that includes right creating areas for street performers uh, right in accordance with all the rules and regulations that type of thing um, that would be great and I think that's that's just a great benefit to the entire area um, I would also note um, our our consulate our consular community in Chicago uh, of foreign representatives uh, here in Chicago um, they've expressed some interest as well so I've got actually uh, if anyone's interested in any international art um, I have a few consulates that have offered up uh, various pieces as well as uh, cultural programming later. Uh, the, the, uh, the consulates of Japan and Germany uh, are coming to mind off the top of my head, but I believe there are some others as well. So uh, do reach out if that's interesting uh, to anyone also. Will the Al Alfresco program be available for the north, north far side of Chicago? I think this goes both to Vanessa and Rob. Um, so I'll answer first. The Chicago Afresco call is for the entire city. We're looking for ideas um, from north, south, west, all parts of the city on ideas on how people can activate the public way in a way that supports dining. And from the grant side, um, with our with our, our our generous donor, we've discussed 75% of the funds being used to support communities on the south and west side, most impacted uh, by COVID, as well as most economically hard hit uh, by by the pandemic. So uh, we do want to spend uh, at least 75% of the funds in those communities. That being said, if possible, we'll also uh, give support to communities in other parts of the city as well, including the north and far north uh, parts. Can a restaurant serve food at a people spot or plaza if they have an expanded outdoor dining or sidewalk cafe permit at another location? The permits are location specific. Brian, do you have any other thoughts on that? No, I was going to say the same thing. Um, yeah, they, these are they're, they're different programs um, and they are location specific. Uh, so, if you wanted to operate in, this, in, a, in a new location, you would need to apply for that location separately from what uh, of a permit you currently have. Vanessa, how is Chicago El Fresco different than EOD, Extended Outdoor Dining? So, I will start and I will ask Brian to jump in as well. Um, so, Chicago El Fresco is looking for 
proposals that create public spaces that are creative and also support outdoor dining. So it's not solely for outdoor dining, not solely tables and chairs outside for um, dining service. It's seeking to have community organizations create places and spaces for public enjoyment and activating the public way while at the same time supporting dining. Um, the extended outdoor dining permit allows for restaurants to up to three restaurants or in coordination with NSSA for restaurants to have tables and chairs in the public way without the goal of doing additional placemaking installations that create a community space. Brian? Uh, yes, uh, uh, you're 100% correct. So the couple differences are the scope of what Alfresco is, as uh, Vanessa was just uh, iterate, uh, iterating right now. Um, it's it's meant to be a more comprehensive program. Uh, the EOD program is uh, really just meant to be um, relief or stopgap for uh, the COVID restrictions that are currently in place. Uh, and it's important to know that the ordinance that authorized the EOD program expires this year. Um, and any extension would be based again on COVID restrictions, whereas the uh, Alfresco dining program is meant to be a long term program as opposed to a, uh, uh, like I said, a stopgap or an intermediate solution for um, the public health restrictions that are in place. Vanessa, will um, will uh, folks be able to get a copy of the a legal agreement, a draft copy of the legal agreement need, that they will need to sign review prior to submitting an application? We can make that available. Um, we can make a template available and um, we can post it on the Chicago.gov Alfresco website and also email it out to participants of this webinar. If an SSA wanted to build in maintenance costs into their own budget for public way aesthetics or customer attraction line items, is that eligible? So I think that's for Rob. So, in terms of grant funds, uh, again, uh, maintenance uh, is just something that we're not looking to include in this grant, uh, and that would be the responsibility of the chamber. Rob, what is the amount of the grant? So, the grants can't exceed $250,000. That being said, that is uh, on the very high end of what a project would cost. Uh, an average project would probably be closer in the 80 to 100 thousand dollar range, depending on the, the size and scope. Um, but we would we would encourage communities to submit um, a, a range of sizes that are appropriate for their community, um, recognizing that um, giving out 250 thousand dollar grants, of course, limits uh, our ability to make an impact uh, across the city. Will bars that are already part of EOD be able to be part of the application? We are three businesses, two restaurants with and one bar. So again, project proposal applicants um, should be SSAs, Chambers of Commerce or nonprofits. That being said, one of the project eligibility sort of criteria and things that we'll be looking at is if the proposed location was a successful EOD. So if there was an EOD that has been successful at a certain location, and now the community wants to put forth a proposal for a Chicago Alfresco project, we'll be taking that into consideration. So just to go back on the question before that, um, it was uh, clarified. The question is, are El Fresco maintenance costs eligible to be budgeted into an SSA's annual customer attraction or public way aesthetics budget? 
So is that a allowable expense for an SSA? I think you'll have to reach out to um, the Department of Planning and Development. And if um, we, we can maybe have um, that discussion internally, um, you can reach out to the Department of Planning and Development or feel free to email at alfresco at cityofchicago.org with the specifics and maybe we can start the conversation and coordinate on, on that. And Brian, just clarifying again, EOD permits are good through the end of 2021, correct? Or the program, the ordinance that authorizes the program was extended through the end of 2021. Um, but your permit will have its own expiration date that would vary on uh, be based on various uh, other requirements. So, depending on when your insurance expires, depending on when your liquor license expires, there are other factors that would affect um, whether or not you would need to request an extension of your permit. Um, but the pro, but if you want to extend your permit. It, it is available to be extended uh, through the end of the year, assuming all requirements are met and there are no changes to the public health requirements. Can you explain sign requirements for sponsors, um, logo or activation? Vanessa, are there what are the requirements around? So signage. Um, Sponsorship signage is not allowed, so advertisement is not allowed in a public way. Um, signage for projects are meant to just describe the space and let people know um, what the space is about. Um, but sponsorship and advertisement is not allowed in public way in the public way through signage. Will food trucks be allowed in these spaces? Will they need a special permit to operate in these spaces? Uh, food truck ordinance requirements would, would, would fall into this. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at the food truck um, parking allowances, et cetera, and maybe um, you might be able to coordinate the activation, for example, with an existing food truck location, like food truck parking location. For example, some of the plazas are right adjacent to a food truck parking spot, right? Um, so that might be sort of a natural, um, there'll be a natural synergy there, um, but we would have to look and evaluate that on a case by case basis and also keeping in mind food truck requirements. So if you already have an expanded outdoor dining permit that does not meet this criteria, can you not apply for El Fresco? For example, the bus has been rerouted already. I think we need some more clarity on that question, unless Vanessa or Brian, you, you're understanding it better than can, myself. Can you repeat it, Luca? If you already have an expanded outdoor dining permit that does not meet that criteria, can you not apply? For example, bus has been rerouted already. So I guess I need clarification on what that criteria means. I'm assuming the alfresco criteria. Yes, if um, that person's still still with us, if you don't mind uh, rechatting. Yeah, question, I'm not. That would be great. Yeah, the way and I don't know again if they could clarify, but I if you're asking. If you like, so the, the, as, as stated before, the EOD and the Alfresco are actually two separate programs. Um, and, and so their, their application criteria are different. Although there is a little bit of overlap, they are different. So, uh, don't assume that just because you qualified for an EOD permit that you will qualify under the application requirements for Alfresco. Does that make sense Vanessa? Yes. So they're, they're going to be two different permits, so we will be evaluating them differently. I think I see, I, I saw some, the person clarify. Uh, 
Oh, so existing EOD rerouted bus. Is it possible to extend the reroute, Brian? So they must have an existing extended outdoor dining permit that rerouted a bus. Is it possible to extend the reroute? Uh, like in times of durate, like are they referring to the duration of like how long CTA will continue to reroute the bus or changing the detour that the bus has been taking? We'll see what their their response is. In the in the meantime, we'll just continue. But Rob, one question for you: What are the number of awards that you hope to issue? My goal would be able to get at least twenty awards out uh, into the communities. Uh, so you know uh, that's that's closer to the hundred thousand number. Um, but uh, let's see let's see what communities propose and what we're able to support. Um, uh, separate from that, I would note um, Mary O'Connor from the Department of Planning and Development is on the call, uh, and she just sent me a message and said that SSAs are able to to use their maintenance funds uh, for that for 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 maintaining the area. So if you have an SSA, that might be one area uh, where you could pull uh, you know some funding for maintenance. Thanks, Mary. Um... Question, I think this refers to earlier in our presentation, Vanessa, what is the cost per linear foot amount? Maybe for the permitting? Or that typically, depending on what it is, like for a people's spot, it has been like $25 a linear foot, but we're gonna have to work at each proposal individually because we're gonna not only be getting people's spots, we're gonna be getting alleys and we're gonna be getting streets and we're gonna be in curbside. So we're going to have to work through the details with the permit office. Rob, can we use this grant for banners? Uh, within, of course, the, the guidelines the, the, that CDOT and BACP have around uh, advertisements uh, for different businesses and in the public way. Uh, if it's art, um, if it's a, a community signage, if it's welcoming folks to the area, that would, of course, I think, just be considered part of the design of the space. Uh, so, yes, of course. And then I know you mentioned this early, but if you could just reiterate uh, possible grant amounts. And then for Brian, is there a three restaurant per block requirement for outdoor dining? Um, so, first, Rob. Sure. So, um, the grants aren't to exceed $250,000. Um, that again is on the very high end of what a project would cost. Um, that's several blocks of something uh, fairly involved. Uh, so, uh, looking to projects probably closer in the eighty to one hundred thousand dollar range for something uh, like a, a more local activation. And then Brian, um, clarification on: Is there a three restaurant per block requirement for outdoor dining? So the requirement to have a minimum of three establishments is only for a full street closure. So if you are requesting to close an entire block of a street, to completely close it to traffic, um, uh, to vehicular traffic, I could say, which they will remain open to pedestrians, then you would need a minimum of three establishments. If you are just asking to expand into, uh, again, ex an existing lot uh, behind or, or adjacent to your restaurant, um, a, a, an individual establishment can apply. Same thing if you're uh, applying for uh, anything else just under the EOD, that three establishment um, requirement is only for a full street closure. Vanessa, is there a formal application format or is there a portal to enter information or do we just use our own format and send an email? For the call for project proposals, there's an actual free level PDF form on their supporting documents on the chicago.gov alfresco website, if that's what the question is. I think it was. Are you able to share a copy of this PowerPoint? The um, webinar is being recorded and it'll be posted on the website. We could also um, attach the PowerPoint as well or a PDF of the PowerPoint, so you don't have to go through the entire recording. Is this, does this grant, is this grant apply also to private property like parking lot or only sidewalk or city property? I think we've answered this, but Vanessa, if you just wanna clarify one more time. 
um, no, the call for project proposals is only for areas on the public way under the Chicago Department of Transportation's jurisdiction. I think this question may need some clarification. Is the SSA process getting expedited or should you already have one or should you plan on partnering with an existing community group? That's so I think for, for folks maybe that are trying to form an SSA but haven't gone through the entire process, um, should they be partnering with an existing community group? If they're not a fully formed SSA. I would assume so. Yes, um, I think as part of the project. Proposal, just write out the information on who the applicant is and then we can. Discuss in detail as needed. There's additional um, questions about private vacant lots and city owned parking lots, but we, I believe we've answered all of those. Another question, Rob, just clarifying. So the max is 250K for three years. Could repairs construction of plaza be in phases? Um, again, it's a lump sum at the beginning at, for this year for the grant. Um, anything else to add to that, Rob? Nope, you hit it. Okay. Since it's for at least six month duration and could begin in June, do the chambers need to budget for inclement weather seating coverage since this would run through December or possible do three months this year and three months next year, summer months only? It's up to the applicants and the proposals that they want to submit. Um, I mean, eventually selected respondents will enter into a three year agreement with the city, but that could mean that the activations themselves happen in the warmer months. Um, so I think stipulate in the call for project proposals what the intention is. I think there's room for all sorts of um, proposals and project types and scales, as said at the beginning. Um, there's a message that the link on the city's website to choose Chicago does not work. Um, what is the URL that we should connect to? Um, Rob, if you want to just say that out loud and then we'll double check on the website to make sure it's functioning correctly. Sure, of course. So if you just go to www.chicagoalfresco.com, it'll take you to our site and you can see all of the, uh, the, the grant details uh, and there's a link there to the CDOT application for the city program as well. If you wanted to have a mobile dining experience that is located in two areas in your neighborhood, is this doable under Chicago Alfresco? I'm not sure what a mobile dining experience is because that would be that would imply multiple locations. So if it's a food truck, it would fall under food truck permitting requirements. We're not talking about a specific space within the public right of way. So there is some clarification to the bus reroute question and um they were wondering if existing EOD reroutes or so existing reroutes that were approved by EOD could be cited in the application. Yes. If you have an existing EOD, you should definitely cite it in the application and what that entails. Um, we may have gotten some additional questions in the Q and A that was the chat.
So I'm still confused by the intentions of the programming aspect of the Alfresco program since programming is not allowed within EOD spaces. So, so why, yes, go on, no, Vanessa, sorry. No, go ahead, Luca, you still. I just say, why would programming be allowed in Alfresco spaces, but not in the EOD spaces? I'll attempt to answer the question and Brian, um, if we can coordinate the answer, that'd be great. So the extended outdoor dining program was was really a way of allowing restaurants, right, to sort of be able to serve in the public way as a result of COVID restrictions. Um, it wasn't, there wasn't a requirement for public space activation and programming and creative solutions to place making. Uh, Fresco is seeking to do that. Is seeking to sort of build upon sort of the need of having, of allowing restaurants to have tables and chairs outside and building upon that and challenging communities to actually create a public space and develop some place making that um, reflects the community needs and identity. So it's going above and beyond what EOD um what's meant to do brian yeah i agree 100 percent um it's the reason these are two separate programs is is just what vanessa was uh, uh getting at right it's the alfresco is is think of it as a way to incorporate dining into uh a community space um whereas the eod program was really more uh, uh, meant to be a lifeline for establishments through COVID. Um, and so, uh, the, so certain activations and stuff that within that space that weren't specific to dining um, were not part of that program. Whereas since Alfresco was meant to be a more open program, meant to be more inviting to the community, um, hopefully, you know, after COVID restrictions are, are removed and we, we would want people to gather, which is the opposite of what we were doing with the EOD, right? It was it was meant to be able to operate during COVID, whereas this is a program that we're hoping will continue far beyond that. And so it's meant to be more open, more inclusive of the community um, and not just a, a lifeline for eating establishments. Can a park district space be used if the park district approves the use of the space for public use for concerts and restaurant use? The Alfresco call, it's meant to use the public right of way under CDOT's jurisdiction, so we cannot answer on park district requirements. So I would reach out to the park district about any projects that you'd like to propose that are similar to our fresco. Can a chamber have multiple locations throughout the community? Yes. Um, the legal agreement would then Stipulate all of the locations if the respondent is selected. Are we allowed to offer pop up restaurants in this space? As long as all food retail establishment permitting requirements have been met through BACP, BACP will have to weigh in on that. And what is the vision after three years? Will sponsorship then be allowed? So to clarify on the sponsorship question, that is not a, uh, a restriction of El Fresco or of EOD. That is a city of Chicago restriction. Um, so uh, the, I think all of us on the call, at least on the city side, would hope that this program would be successful and it will continue past three years. Um, so in terms of long term, but again, the, the restriction on having uh, logos or private uh, advertisement on the public way 
is not specific to this program. It's a citywide restriction. Correct. And this may be the last question, unless um, some folks put some more in, but what is the first thing we need to get in if we are interested? Could you repeat that, Lufka? I'm sorry. What is the first thing we need to get in if we are interested? So what is the first thing participants need to do if they are interested in applying for this opportunity? Please visit the chicago.gov fresco website. Go under supporting documents. There should be a fillable application form that walks you through all of the call for project proposal requirements for the city to evaluate your proposal. So I don't see any additional questions coming in through the chat for the Q&A. The recording and the presentation will be available on the website. And um, thank you to all our panelists who did such a wonderful job today going through the Chicago Alfresco program. And um, thank you for all the participants in attending today. Vanessa, Rob, or Brian, if you want to say any departing words. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank everyone for participating. Um, we're excited to see what communities are going to be proposing. Um, if there's any additional questions after this webinar, feel free to email them to alfresco at cityofchicago.org. And please um, visit our website at chicago.gov alfresco for additional information. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.